that prophecy that was given over our church the other day, it's on the back of your bulletin if you have that. And if you've got 2020 vision, bifocals, and everything else, you can see that. But it is really powerful. Take that, use that, you'll enjoy that, and that'll be a good part uh, for you to be speaking over your life and your family. Somebody say it's Breakthrough Sunday. Now would you say it like you mean it? That's what I'm asking God for today. We don't take these services lightly. When you come here on a Sunday morning, I don't want to waste your time. We don't want to take this time of the Holy Spirit lightly. Because we want to press in because we know Jesus is coming soon. Somebody say He's coming soon. And the, the message this morning is time marches on. Do you remember Chase, Tracy Lawrence was a country western singer? He sang that song. Uh, where's Keeson at? He might could do that for me. Uh, if he can't do it, I'll be glad to do it. Oh, thank you very much, Leah. I really appreciate that. I appreciate that vote of confidence. I, what? Yeah, hit it. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. You put me on the spot. Oh, I could, but I can't. How many believe Jesus is coming really soon? The, the signs are out there. The signs are out there. You say, Pastor, how do you know that He's coming again? Well, we don't know the day and the hour that is going to appear, but the Bible says we can know the season. We can know the season. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, verse 25, as you see the day of the Lord approaching, gather all the more. You see, we're not just meeting for 60 minutes and going out. We, we do more than just meet for 60 minutes. We're going to gather all the more. That's the reason we're doing September the 5th in our Bible study for the women's and for the men. Uh, women will be studying how to live like a king's daughter, and men will be studying never quit, never quit. And so why are we doing that? Why do we want to have these studies? Because we can see the day of the Lord is approaching, and it's quickly on us. If you look around this world, you can see everything that's going on, and it's very clear. The things that Jesus prophesied over in the New Testament are coming to pass. The things that was prophesied in the Old Testament is coming to pass. The time is now. And the thing that is startling to most people out there, they think that there's prophecies out there that need to be fulfilled before Jesus comes back. We're, I've got news for you. It's now. It's coming. It's here. We've seen over the past 20 years, signs after signs after signs have come to pass. And there's an Antichrist spirit loosed in the world as I speak. There is an Antichrist spirit. Records are, are being broken everywhere. Have you noticed that uh, they're having storms on the West Coast that they haven't had in years and years and years? Have you noticed that we see mortgage rates uh, the highest they've been in 22 years? Have we noticed the influx of the border at the Rio Grande River? It might as well run north and south instead of east and west because illegals are pouring in. Mark my word, it will cripple this nation. Crimes and theft is happening everywhere. Did you notice uh, Nordstrom's in California the other day was hit by a flash mob of kids? They came in and they stole everything they could put their hands on. They called it social justice. But what it really was was just grand theft. Somebody say amen. amen. And they like to say, well, we did it for our babies so we can feed our babies. No, if that's the case, you'd be stealing milk and eggs and bread. Have you saw the war overseas in Ukraine sending $700 billion to Ukraine? while we're giving uh, $700 to a household of children and mother and a father in Maui. Have you noticed the vaccines are starting to kick up again? People are talking about uh, the vaccines happening again. The jab is the greatest hoax that ever has been perpetrated on this world. Biden administration is prepared to bring back full COVID restrictions beginning in September. I want you to know we will not capitulate. We will not give in. We will fight to the end. Somebody say amen. They say it's going to kick up in September, go through December, a new COVID strain. Have you noticed that we went from high energy, uh, from energy independence to new record high prices in gas? Has anybody noticed that or is it just me? People rewriting the Word of God with a computer and they're removing God's name uh, from any gender. No more male, no more him, no more his. Have you noticed the rise of perversion in America? The U.S. is the leader of pornography throughout the whole world. 
Have you noticed that children are being taken and sold as sex slaves around the world? Have you noticed the singers and the rappers are glorifying Satan openly and singing about it? Have you noticed the transgender men are wearing dresses, wigs, and reading to our babies? Our children are not going to sit and listen to this junk being peddled down to them by those people. There's not going to be they, them, he, she. We're not going to go by pronouns. They are either male or they are female. They are either a boy or they are a girl. You see, gender is not fluid regardless what the nut jobs might want you to think. It's easy for those with just half a brain to figure out what they are. All they got to do is just look down. Somebody say amen. amen. It's been that way for years. We have not progressed. The Word has not evolved. God said He created male and female. It's as simple as that. God created male and female and nothing else. Now the devil wants to corrupt that. The devil did the rest. Abortions was introduced by Democrats as safe, legal, and rare by Bill Clinton years ago. If you you cannot stand for the lives of precious babies, you cannot stand for anything. Now we have minor girls that can go have an abortion, even in our state, without consent from parents. And if you dare raise a problem, if you ever uh, open up and say, no, you're not for that, you can be uh, penalized with a a fine or jail. So the state can slaughter babies at will. People are arrested outside of abortion clinics for just reading God's Word. We are one generation away from a godless society. I said we're one generation away. And the time is now, I said the time is now for the church to sound the alarm. The Lord is coming, folks, and He could come at any moment. You know, I think there's people that think uh, wealth, certain things have to fall into place. They say, you know, Pastor, you've got to get the perfect prophetic timing. No, you don't. It's already been fulfilled. There's no prophecies that have to be fulfilled before Jesus can come back. He can come back before this message is over. That's why we are living as though He's coming back in the next few moments, the next few seconds. You know, that's what we're called to do. We're called to live as though He's coming back today. Somebody say amen. Amen. Time is dwindling down. You know, the fancy word for Jesus' return and His coming again was called His imminent return of Christ. And we would teach that and we would preach that and we'd tell people that Jesus could come at any moment. You know, when I was growing up, Christians couldn't do a whole lot of things. When Linda was growing up, Christians couldn't do a whole lot of things. They couldn't have playing cards in their house. There was no heart, spades, clubs, and diamonds. Somebody say, oh my. You're going to hell if you got caught with a playing card in your house. You couldn't go to the movies. God forbid you go to the movies because if Jesus comes back and you're in the movie house, you're going to be left behind. I mean, there was nothing some Christians could do. But there is one thing they could do. They could eat a lot. Somebody say amen. Amen. Some of those uh, churches could eat a lot. And a lot of the folks did a lot of the time. They ate and they ate and they ate and they came for potluck fellowship. They come for buffet fellowship. Come on. You know I'm telling the truth. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, you always heard people preach on every sin, but you never heard them preach on gluttony, amen? They would preach about uh, getting those cancer sticks out of your mouth. Meanwhile, they're downing three Big Macs. Somebody say amen. But anyway, there was nothing you couldn't do back then, but they could preach and they could teach and they could tell people about Jesus coming soon. And it is true. It is true. He is coming soon. And you know, the Bible tells us that Jesus gave us specific things to look for. There were signs out there for His return of specific things that are going to happen. And He wasn't really vague when He talked about it, uh, told His disciples what would happen. He told them what would happen here on earth before He came back to take His people home. He told them. How many would like to know specific things that have to happen before Christ returns? Today, I want to encourage you. I want to bolster your faith. I want to build you up. Say it with me. The clock is ticking. I'm going to say it like you mean it. The clock is ticking. Time is marching on. Time is literally running out. I believe if you've ever seen an hourglass with the sand running through the hourglass and you look at it and it's flowing down through the middle of the hourglass, I believe the sand in the hourglass would just have a grain or two of sand left in the top of it. Time is coming to a close. The time is now. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a limited offer. How many of you have ever seen those commercials? It's a limited offer and you better call now. I want you to know Christ is a limited offer. You better make a decision for Jesus today, now, before it's too late. 
You see, time's going to expire. God offers heaven, and that time will run out, and you will not be able to make it. So you want to make sure that you're on the right side when he comes in and takes his children home. The world as we know it is temporary. The world is temporary, and believers see it not temporary, but believers see it eternal. We see it eternal. The world is winding down. And that's why Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 9, verse 4. He said, We work the works of him who sent me while it's still or yet day, for the night is coming when no man can work. That's what the Bible says. We've got to work the works of him who sent us during the day and because night is coming. Everybody say, night is coming. Even 2,000 years ago, Jesus was trying to prepare his disciples and the people. He put an urgency in them. He said, hey, you better get your hearts right. You better live right. You better get busy for the kingdom because I'm coming again. He prepared us for the last 2,000 years for his coming. You say, oh, he he did it 2,000 years ago, but he hasn't come yet. He's coming. He's coming. When you least expect it, he's going to show up. How many of you were at home when you were a child by yourself and, and your folks walked in on you unsuspecting when you least expected it? Did anybody, did that happen to anyone here other than me? Well, let me tell you, that's the way it is when Jesus comes for his children. He's going to come when you least expect it. And so we don't live like we got 100 years. We don't live like we got five, 50 years. We don't live like we got five years or five minutes. Live like today, it's coming to an end. And there is work to be done. And look around you, folks. There's work to be done. There's too many empty chairs in this house. There's work to be done. We need to be reaching people for Christ. There's work to be done. There are people that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I would hate to get to that day when I stand in heaven one day before God and He shows me all the places I could have made a difference. Well, Pharaoh, why wasn't you here? Pharaoh, why didn't you do this? Pharaoh, why why weren't you a part of this? And here's where people are really confused. They think everybody's going to stand before God in the same judgment line. That's not the case. It's not the same judgment line for everybody. Sinners are going to stand before God under a different judgment than the saints. The Bible said that sinners are going to be judged for their sins, for rejecting Jesus Christ and His blood. But Christians are going to be over in this line. We're not going to be judged for that because we did not reject Christ. We did not reject the blood. We accepted Jesus as our Savior, but we're going to be judged for the works that we've done on earth. We're going to be judged. How many people did we reach for Jesus? What did we do with our life that made a difference to eternity? What kind of testimony did you share with people that you saw? That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. Each one's works will come clear, and the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, it will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, and he himself will be saved, yet as though through fire. Our works, the things we've done, will be passed through the fire. All of our works are going to be passed through the fire like a test. And those works that will either be burned up like chaff, or they'll come out on the other side as gold refined. I'm telling you, we need to be ready to do the work of the Lord. We need to be ready and working for the kingdom of God. I don't want to get to heaven with all my works that are chaff. I don't want to get to heaven and say, I'm sorry, Lord, this is all I got. And so many people are going to go that way, and that's not the way God intends you to do. He intends for you to be doing the work or the ministry and touching lives. So when you get to heaven, He says, Well done, good and faithful servant, and here is your another crown for you. And then you get to take that crown, and you get to lay it at the feet of Jesus. I don't want to go up there without any crowns, amen? I don't don't want that. You see, there are things that matter in life. There are things that are eternal, and there are things that are temporary, temporal. I don't want to waste my time with temporary uh, uh, temporary things. I don't want to waste my time that way. I want to get involved with things that are eternal, reaching people for Jesus Christ so they can come to heaven with us. I want to get involved with those things. 
I want to get involved with those things that are eternal. Folks, it's time to tell somebody about Jesus. Nobody wants to feel like they're wasting their lives. There's nobody that wants to feel that way. And you know there are things that we do right now that will ensure our life is not wasted, and that is share the gospel. If you want to make sure your life isn't wasted, and when you get up there and you have nothing to give, you start sharing the gospel. Your life is important. You are critical to the mission and to the kingdom of God. You are important. Somebody say, I'm important. You matter to the kingdom of God. Don't ever let the devil lie to you and tell you that you're worthless. Don't ever let the devil lie to you and say you can't do something or that you're insignificant or that you're irrelevant or that you're unimportant because you matter to God. There's people that go through this life and they feel like they're useless. Even if I died, nobody would ever care. The enemy attacks their mind. And if I died, nobody would even notice That is a lie from the devil himself. You are not an insignificant person. You are crucial to the kingdom and the body of Christ. Now the devil wants you to think otherwise. Oh, you're small, insignificant. You're not doing anything big for God. You're nothing. What you do doesn't really matter. A person's body is very sophisticated. Did you know that? We don't know all the parts of our body and how it works. But I tell you what, you've got five fingers on your hand. I don't know why God made us that way, but let me tell you, you get a hammer, and when you get home, you take a hammer, and you put your hand down on the table, and you think that pinky's not worth anything, give it a good whack, and watch the rest of your body shout out, hey, we need that part, we stop it, quit, we need it after all, it's really important. I want you to know the devil's trying to whack you and tell you you're not important. Don't ever let the devil tell you you're not important. We're significant. We're doing things that matter to God. And if you see how important you are to God, you're going to realize that time is running out, the clock is ticking, the sand is about to go down. And you'll be launched into action and thrust into the battle and wage war on the devil. You see, time is now. I don't believe we have 100 years. I don't believe we got 50 years or 10 years. I don't expect to see my grave. I don't expect to see my coffin. I expect to hear the sound of the trumpet. I expect to see the clouds roll back. I expect to hear the voice of the Lord shouting from heaven, Come on up! Come on up! Come on up! I expect to get caught up in the air with Him. I expect to be snatched up, caught up, taken up, taken out. I'm going to heaven when He comes. I'm telling you the truth. I don't expect a funeral. I always told Linda, if I ever do have a funeral, I want it to be the biggest, grandest thing. You spend a lot of money on that funeral for me. (laughs) But you know the truth of the matter is, I don't think I'll ever see it. I don't think I will be around for a funeral. I don't think that there's going to be a funeral director working on me. I don't think I'm going to have my toes straight up in the coffin. I don't expect to see a grave digger digging my grave. Because I expect to be caught in the air with Jesus. I'm living like that. I'm living like I'm going to be caught up in the air at any moment. Life is too short, folks. You know it's crazy when you go through life. You don't realize how fast time goes. Amen? You know when you were young, it feels like time is crawling. I remember the days when my folks would say, Get in the car, we're going to go to Portales. After Sunday church. Not before Sunday church. After Sunday church. Some of you are not getting up. Get to church. Be here. Be here. Be here. Then you go. And, man, I would think that trip to 18 miles was the longest, longest trip. Does anybody ever think like that? Anybody other than me? Was it just me? Oh, Mama, we don't want to go. It's too long. You know, it, it takes so long to get there, and time just crawls. You're sitting in class for uh, a, a long summer session, and you're there that day, and the, you're waiting, and you're waiting for the time to elapse. I remember sitting in the armory at Eastern New Mexico, listening to that old professor go on and on and on. Longest days of my life. I would have rather been put in solitary confinement at the jail. I remember those days. And it seems how interesting, the older I get, it seems like time goes faster and faster and faster and faster. I'm going to tell you something because I've heard people talk. I heard people say when I was younger, you better enjoy it, brother, because it goes quick. How many of you ever heard that? How many of you ever said that? Amen. You know what I'm talking about? 
and they're little once, and then you, your children are little once, and all of a sudden you blink your eyes, and they're adults. They're getting married, going to college. And then grandparents and parents, you know what I'm talking about. It feels just like yesterday when you held that baby in your arms. It feels like yesterday when you brought them home from the hospital. You blink and they're already grown up. It's amazing how quick things move and how rapidly it is. Now, my daughter, she's not here today, and I'm going to have a long talk with her because I'm sure she's listening online. I'm telling you, she doesn't say, I, I'm way too young to have a daughter that old. And uh, I want you to know, time goes quick. Time goes very fast. I'm telling you, there's a reason that I'm talking about this, because time is going so fast, it's moving so rapidly, and our lives matter to God. And if they matter to God, that means we got to get to work doing what He called us to do. I'm not going to allow myself to go through life walking like a dead zombie that's in the streets of Portland or New York or L.A. The, the world may want to be a zombie, but the case, the case of the matter is I don't. The world wants to coast through life, Get up, go to school, go, get up, go to work, go to the job, come home, eat dinner, do some chores, sit down, and watch TV, and then fall asleep in the chair, and then get up, go to the bed, and do it all the same next day. We get into a rut, we get into a pattern, we get into a mold, and many of us are just on a, a hamster wheel. It's time to get off the wheel, and we got to get out of that zombified state that we're in. And when we look at the things that are temporal, instead of keeping our eyes on the eternal, what's truly important, I made up my mind I refuse to coast through life. You see, folks, things are fixing to change. I said things are fixing to change. We're going to see some great changes in this house. We're going to see a powerful, powerful move of God. We're going to see this house filled up for the glory of God. We're going to see changes in this house. And God is going to do things we never dreamed possible. And I've made up my mind I refuse to coast in life. I want you to say that with me. I refuse to coast in life. I tell you, we call this breakthrough and turn around Sunday because things are going to change. My prayer is that God empowers us and strengthens us to do the work that we've been called to do. I'm going to pray that God empowers you, that there is no wasted time in Jesus' name. My prayer is for what the enemy is trying to do in your generation, it will not come to pass. What the enemy wants to do in your family, it will not come to pass. What the enemy wants to do to your children, it will not come to pass. Your grandchildren, it will not come to pass. That God will exempt you from every wicked thing that hell tried to destroy you with. You are exempt today in the name of Jesus. You're released. You're released from the devil's grip. There's freedom in Jesus. That is your story. That's your testimony. That's your song. Devil, you're going to receive discharge papers today in the name of Jesus. Devil, that's not my story. That's not my testimony. It's going to be a different story for me. It's going to be a different story for you because that's my prayer for you. James 4, 13 and 14 says, Come now. You who say today or tomorrow we'll go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is as a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes, vanishes away. It is crazy how fast life goes. I guarantee you nobody talked to somebody on their deathbed who said, thank God I'm out of here. It's finally happened. Thank God I'm done with this life. Life took forever. Nobody's ever said that. I never thought it was going to stop. Nobody said that. Nobody lies on their deathbed and wishes for, uh, that it would come really, really quick. As a matter of fact, they want 10 more years. 10 more years with their spouse. 10 more years with their children. 10 more years. 10 more years with their grandkids. We always want more time, not less time, when it comes time to be on your deathbed. They say, oh, if I could just get some more time when you're on the deathbed. I've heard many say that. If I could just have some more time. If I could just get 10 more minutes with that person. If I could just have one more day with that person. Why? Because time goes so quickly. There are people here that maybe you've lost loved ones. Maybe you've lost somebody here in the last year. This uh, This past year, has anybody lost a loved one? Raise your hand. Let me see where you're at. Anybody lost a loved one? You know, it's difficult. Sometimes you think, I cannot believe it. I wish I had more time. Maybe it was your granddad. Maybe it was your grandmother. 
And you thought, oh, if I just had more one more, more week with them. Oh, if I just had one more lunch with them. Oh, if I had more time for them just one more time. If I could just give them one more hug. You don't realize how fast time is going by. It's flying by. We've got to make the best of our time. I said we've got to make the best of our time. Ephesians 5.16, the Bible says, Make the most of every opportunity in the evil days. That is a word for the church. Have you seen much more evil days than this that we're living in? I haven't. And so what do we need to do? we got to make the most of every opportunity. Every opportunity. Every second is precious. That's what the Bible's talking about. Because time goes quickly. I'm 63 years old. I'm not as young as I once was. There's an old country song there, Keeson. I'm not as young as I once was. But I'm not as old as some of you here today. You know, you start to realize something. The average person lives around 80 years. A guy wrote a book. It was a business book, and it was called 4,000 Weeks. And he named it 4,000 Weeks because he said, that's about the average lifespan of a person. And so the author wants you to imagine thinking of your life in terms of 4,000 weeks. That's the number of weeks when you live 80 years old. 4,000 weeks is the average. I've used a lot of my 4,000 weeks. Amen? Somebody know what I'm talking about? I've lived a lot of those. Now, I believe I'm going to live much more than 80 years. I believe I'm going to live much more than 4,000 weeks. If Jesus tarries, I'll be the last preacher standing, and I'll gum the devil to death. I promise you. Amen? If Jesus tarries, I'm going to be the oldest Holy Ghost preacher filled with the Holy Ghost telling people about Jesus. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. Those 4,000 weeks go quickly. You know, it just felt like this year just started. And it's over halfway through. Many times people get into cruise control mood. They, uh, mode. They, they slip into cruise control mode. And they just have a pattern of just getting by, doing what's comfortable. And they never reach the, their sphere of influence. They never reach the circle of influence. But God is calling you. God is calling this church. God is calling us. He's calling us to a place where you make a great impact on your generation. That you do more than you ever dreamed. I'm telling you, the anointing's coming on you today in a new measure, a new fashion. You're going to do great and mighty things for the kingdom of God. Does anybody want it today? I believe that. He said life is a mist. It goes very quickly, very quickly. The Bible tells us in James 4.14, whereas you do not know what's going to happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is as a vapor that appears for a little time, and then boom, it's gone. The psalmist understood it perfectly in Psalms 90 verse 12. Teach us to number our days. I'm not ignorant of the fact that life is flying by. I'm not ignoring it. I'm not ignorant about it. I recognize that time is going quickly, so the Lord wants us to recognize us and teach us to number our days so that we have a heart of wisdom. Do you know the heart of wisdom does? A heart of wisdom says, okay, if I've got limited time available to me, I'm going to do what matters most. I'm going to do what matters most. I'm going to get involved with what eternal versus temporary. I'm not going to spend my time with all those things that want to suck our time away. It's not hard to lose track of your time, amen? In 2023, we need to spend time with the Lord. We need to be in His Word. I had a friend growing up, and he went to college with us over at Eastern, and he was in his room. He had his apartment, and he named his bed The Word. He named his bed The Word. And they asked him why he was late for class in the Bible class, and he said, I was in the Word till late this morning, amen? (laughs) I want you to know, we need to be in the Word. We need to be in the Word. There are a lot of time suckers out there that were time wasters. They will steal from you valuable time that God has given you. I'm not saying you got to be some kind of a Grinch that's always on the grind, always on the run, always working, working, working. That you got to stay productive all the time, 24-7. I'm not telling you got to be like that. You don't have to be some weirdo that never allows time to relax or to enjoy yourself. 
But we cannot allow our lives to become a black hole of nothingness. And you know, so, that so many times churches are filled with people living a black hole of nothingness. They don't do anything for the kingdom. They don't produce anything for the kingdom. They're absolutely zero in the kingdom. Folks, I'm telling you, the church better come alive because Jesus is coming. There are people all around you who need the gospel of Jesus. They need to hear the good news that Jesus saves. You need to be aware that people are around you that need a touch from God. Just don't coast through life. Be aware that their people have eternal spirits that are going to spend one place or the other. They're going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. There is no third category. There's no third option. They're not going to have a purgatory. There's not going to be Abraham's bosom. They're going to be in the presence of God or they're going to be separated forever from the presence of God. Every person will have to stand before God one day. And I don't want to coast through this life and realize as I'm standing before God, I missed out on a lot of things, Lord. But look at all these people that have never told me. Just look at all these people that have never told me about Jesus. I don't want people saying that about me. Oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I should have made it. I should have made it. I should have went to heaven. I should have. But now I'm headed to hell. You know why, Pastor? And I said, no. He said, because some people's face was buried in their phone. They could have told me. They didn't have time for me. They were too busy on their computer. They were too busy watching TV. They were too busy. So I'm here in this line fixing to be judged, and I'm going to spend my life in hell. There's going to be a lot of people doing that. And you know, people are going to be pointing not just to the pastor. You know who they're going to be pointing to? They're going to be pointing to the church. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me about this? How come you were too ashamed? To tell me about Jesus? How come you were too embarrassed to tell me about the love of God? How, how come you were like that? How come you didn't want me to get into heaven? Why didn't I have an opportunity to come see Jesus? I missed it because you coasted through life. God forbid anybody say that about you and I, that I missed it because I coasted through life. Life is a vapor. It goes so quick. It comes to an end quickly. And I'm going to tell you something. We've got to make up our minds. We want to be used by God to the greatest degree possible. Somebody say amen. God, if there's anybody you can use, use me. Say that with me. God, if there's anybody you can use, use me. I'm not going to pray, oh, God, save America. Do you know that's not a scriptural prayer? Do you know that's not scripture? God, save America. You can pray that all you want in your prayer time. God save America. But that's not his job. God never instructed us anywhere in the Bible to pray that God would save souls. You know what he did tell us? You know what he did say? He said the most scriptural prayer is pray like Jesus said in John 4, 35. Do not say there are still four months and then come the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes. Look at the fields. They're white and ready for harvest. Why? Because it's not God's job to save America. It's yours. It's mine. It's ours. God's not looking, because God's looking for workers that will preach the gospel to Jesus, uh, Christ to every creature. And those that believe are baptized and they'll be saved. And those that don't believe, they will be damned. And their signs shall, uh, for those that believe, their signs will follow them. And they will believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. They'll lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, God's raising up in you in the final moments of time, people in the kingdom before it's too late. God's raising something up inside of you. Teach us, Lord, to number our days. Teach us to number our days. In Psalms 39, verse 4 through 5, the Bible says, Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days that I might know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadth and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly, every man at his best state is but vapor. Highlight that in your Bible. That's a, that's a good scripture to put in there. Psalms 39, verses 4 and 5. Time is coming to a close. It is almost over. Do you remember when you went to high school? It doesn't seem that long ago. But it is incredible how quick the decades stack up. Somebody say amen. It doesn't take long. 45 years I've been out of high school. It is incredible. Four and a half decades. The clock is ticking. 
You know, when you start seeing those trends in the 60s come back around, it's more than I can handle. <laughs> you see them coming back around, you say, oh, yeah, I lived that. I've done that. I've been there. I've seen that. Time flies by and people get into a rut. We cannot afford to get into a rut. This is the time to hook up with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is the time. This is the time to get serious about Jesus. This is the time to put things in order, to organize things. It's time to get your life right with the Lord. I said it's time to get your life right with the Lord. I said it's time to get your life right with the Lord. Let's not wait. Let's not put it off. Let's not procrastinate. People say, oh, I just know God's got a plan for me. This is the day. This, this is the day. The time is now. Get on board. We were out soul winning one day in the trailer park and, and uh, had a guy that just wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. And I'm not talking about myself. And we go to see this lady. We knock on her door. And we are talking to her about Jesus. And she says, come on in. I want to visit with you. And so we went in. And the guy is still standing on the porch. His head is still bowed. He's still praying, oh, God, let us in. We've been in five minutes. Can I tell you something? Don't be left on the porch. Get in. Get plugged in. Start reaching for people for Christ. Start telling people about Jesus. Get with the program. People say, I know God's got a plan for me. Yes, he does. And I can't wait for you to get involved with God's plan. I cannot wait for that. Because when I see you next time, when I see you next week, I'm going to see eyes that are open up about this big. I'm going to see jaws dropping about this big. And when I see you in seven years, I'm going to see you looking just totally different because of what God has done for you. I'm telling you, you're on the verge to see God move on your life. You're not here by accident. You're not here by circumstance. You're here ordained to be here. God wants to move in your life. He wants to move in your family and your friends. I feel like we're going to step to a higher level. I feel like we're going to go to a higher ground. I feel like we're going to go from glory to glory, victory to victory. Soon and very soon, God's got great things for us in store. He's going to start opening doors for you. you Just imagine what the next five months is going to do. Just imagine what five months is going to do at the end of 2020, 2023. You're going to be in God's favor, you're going to be in God's blessing, and you're going to be in God's benefits, and it's all going to be poured out to you because you were obedient. You ever go to a track meet, and the racers are there in their blocks, and they're, stand, and they're there, and they get down with their hands down in the blocks? The worst thing a church can do is stay in the blocks. When that gun fires, when that gun fires, they better be off the line. Church, we don't have time to be in the blocks. We don't have time to stay there because we're going to be lapped and we're going to be lapped and we're going to be lapped. I don't want to see you in the blocks. I want to see you get out of the blocks. It's time for action. It's time for, to get on the start. It's time. The clock is ticking. Time is running out. Life is too great to be put on hold, set aside, delayed, or postponed. Your gifts are too great to be put on the shelf. God's going to lift you up by His mighty right hand, and He's going to use you for His glory. Don't you dare surrender. Don't you dare submit to the devil. You give your life to Jesus. I'm telling you right now, time is fading. Jesus said, watch, and you'll see things happen in your life like you've never seen before. Jesus is coming again. We don't have time to play church. We don't have time to play church. We've got to get about the business of reaching people. I don't know if you know my friend, but her name is Lisa May sitting right over here. Lisa May hadn't been here very many times, probably three times. She's already bringing guests. I want to ask you, you've been here for three years. Have you brought anybody you start bringing people to the house of God so they can get saved, so they can get ministered to, so they can get touched, so they can have their lives changed, so they can see their families changed, so they can walk in prosperity, so they don't have to walk in poverty. Start bringing people to the house of God. Bring them to the house. I'm not going to waste their time. And I know the King of Kings and Lord of Lords won't waste their time. I know that. Would you be faithful? Would you be faithful? Would you recognize where you're at, where we're at in this day and time that we live in? That it is important to be about the king's business. I said it's important that we're about the king's business. Would you stand to your feet and every head bowed and every eye closed? I want to talk to you just for a moment or two. 
There's an urgency. There is an urgency. There's an urgency in this hour. Jesus is about to come. I can hear the rumble. I can hear the rumble in the clouds. I can hear the stirring in the heavens. And I'm telling you, Jesus is about to come forth. And he's coming. And he's coming to call his children home. And after that, there's no more time. You either made your decision to live with Jesus or you decided to live with the devil. Time is fleeting. What are you doing about it? Have you told your neighbor? Have you told your work associate? Have you told your friend? Have you told your family, we don't have much time, we've got to get on it? Have you been, have you been honest with them? Or have you been on cruise control? Have you been on autopilot? Are you too embarrassed? Are you too ashamed? We've got a job to do, folks. We, if we're going to touch a city, we got a job to do. I said, if we're going to touch a city, we got a job to do. We need everybody. Yes. You're not in, 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 insignificant. You are crucial. Yes. You're going to know, you know people I'll never know. You're going to go places I never go. Would you reach out to somebody today? Would you tell somebody about Jesus? Would you get off the couch out of the recliner of life? Would you wake up from the slumber today? Say, God, use me. God, use me. Would you put your hands straight out? Would you just offer yourself to the Lord this week? Would you offer yourself to Him? Would you just say, here am I. Here, here am I. God, use me. God, use me to touch somebody. Use me to reach somebody. Use me, God. And as you've got those empty hands, God's going to place it in you. God's going to place it in you. God's going to place it in you. I said, God's going to place it in you. I said, God's going to place it in you today. Use these hands. Don't let them be empty. Don't let them be empty. Don't let them be empty. Use these hands in the name of Jesus. Use these hands. Use these hands, oh God. Use these hands. Use these hands for the glory of God. Use these hands. Use these hands, oh God. Don't let them be empty. We want to take some crowns into the kingdom. We want to take some crowns to the throne room. Don't let our hands be empty. Let us use these hands that you've given us for the glory of God. Let us use these hands for the glory of God. Use us, O oh God. Would you tell him? Just use me, Lord. Would you tell him, use me, O oh Lord? Use me, Lord. The one and only King. Use me, Lord. The one and only He'll do it. He'll do it. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Lord. No other name Fill up these Jesus. hands. I don't want them to be empty, Lord. I don't want them to be empty. I want you to use me. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. Use me, God. Use me. Let me take somebody to heaven with me. Let me take that friend or that family member. Let me take that loved one. Let me take that loved one. Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Use me, oh God. Don't let me go into the heavens without doing telling somebody about Jesus. Time is too short. Time is too short. Use me. Take these empty hands and fill them. Fill them with purpose. Fill them with power. Fill them with anointing. Fill them with the goodness of God. Fill them, Lord Jesus. Every hand, every hand. Every hand. Fill them, oh God. Fill them with purpose.
fill them. We're not worthless. We're not worthless. We're not insignificant. Fill these hands. Fill these hands. Fill these hands, oh God. Fill us, Lord. Tell him, fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Just tell him. Just tell him. Cry out. Fill me. Fill me. Empower your people. Empower your people. Empower this house. Lift him up. Lift him up. He said when you lift him up, he's going to do something. He's going to draw all men to him. Would you lift him up this week? Would you lift him up this week? Would you lift him up this week? Lift up the King of kings and Lord of lords. Surrender to it. Give God your life. Time is too short to go to heaven without anyone. Oh, time is too short. Holy, don't let us play church. Don't let us just come and go. Use us, God. Use us, God. Tell Him to use you. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me for Your glory. Use me for Your glory. Sunday, break through Sunday, turn around Sunday, your life is going to be changed, different. God is going to do something in you today. Use you. Lift him up. Lift him up. Woo! Lift him up. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's been a good day in the house of the Lord. It's been a good day. I want to thank you for coming. I'm asking God to empower you, use you, quicken you, sharpen you up. Get ready for the battle. Get ready for the king. Get ready. If I don't see you Sunday and he calls us home, I'll see you in the air. I'll see you in the air. Love you, care about you, praying for you. I want you to have God's best. I don't want you to settle for second best. I want you to have God's very best. Linda, I never asked you, but come up here. I want you to pray over people, would you? Close this out. Holy Spirit, I worship you. I praise you. I exalt you. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. You are our beginning and our end. 
You are our majesty. You are our savior. You are our king. You are the creator of heaven and earth. And we worship you, Father. We say that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And Father, I thank you for this house. I thank you for these people. And Father, I pray for the blessings of God to overtake the people of this house. That prosperity and blessing, that grace and mercy chase us down the street and that they overtake us. I pray, Holy Spirit, for salvations to begin to run rampant through this house. Father, I pray for every chair to be full of lost people who have come to the saving knowledge of you. Father, I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come alive in this house. I pray for the smoke of your glory. I pray for your fire, Father, to fill this house. Father, I pray, Father, that salvation would be the theme of the day. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for our children and our grandchildren to come back home. I pray, Holy Spirit, Father, for addictions to be broken in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, by the blood of the Lamb, Father, that this house is full and that, Father, we worship you like we've never worshiped you before. Father, I pray for an acceleration of anointing to come to this house. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would anoint each and every one here. Father, that you would accelerate that anointing because time is short. Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that this would be a house of healing. I pray, Holy Spirit, that that your health reigns in this house. Father, that your healing walks up and down every aisle and that people are touched by the name and by the, the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray, Father, that even the parking lot, Father, when people put their foot on the parking lot, Father, that they are overtaken by the power and the anointing of Almighty God. Father, I pray for healings, Father. I know your word says we lay hands on the sick and that they would recover. But, Father, I pray for such power and such anointing to be upon this house, to be even in the parking lot. Father, that when people touch their foot on the ground, that they're healed by the power and the anointing of God Almighty. Almighty. Father, I thank you for it. I praise you for it. God, we invite you into our lives. We invite you into this house. Father, I pray for everyone here that, Father, you put a hedge of protection around them. I draw a bloodline around their homes and around their vehicles, around their business, around their jobs. And, Father, I pray for whatever they need by the blood of the Lamb that you bring it to them. Father, I pray, Father, that you speak to them, that you woo them, that you love them. Father, that they know who you are.